my name is Sade, welcome. And today I'm talking about how the meat-based diet or a carnivore diet has saved my life. I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder in 2015. I have suffered from depression, anxiety, and I have always remembered having anger issues as a kid. And uh, I've spent most of my life with that anger, with the irritation, with the anxiety, the depression, and the most part of the last eight to 10 years suffering from borderline, although I was only um, diagnosed in 2015. So I just wanna talk a little bit today about how carnivore, a meat-based diet has literally saved every single part of my life and just hoping to get the message out there on you know the false information that's being given about nutrition which is just it it every day is more mind-blowing to me the fact that i listened to the guidelines and i listened to all of the things that i was told to do you know that were supposedly healthy and were going to help me exercise uh, eat right eat a balanced diet and none of it did help um, I just went through the motions just like a hamster on the wheel going from junk food to healthy living and then sometimes I would I would even go healthy for two years straight no I've always been very disciplined with no break but nothing ever helped me so I was like okay what's the point of feeling like crap and um, not eating the food that I want to eat so um I'm going to talk a little bit about borderline personality disorder because I know not everybody is aware of it and uh, I know I keep saying it and you know it's something that I used to suffer from so I'm just going to go through the um, the symptoms quickly the things that I personally dealt with also and I know a lot of other people with borderline also suffer with most of these things so I just got them written down here quickly um, like I just mentioned inappropriate and intense anger such as frequently losing your temper being sarcastic bitter or having physical fights now this sounds very manipulative and I agree it is it's extremely manipulative because we don't know how to regulate our emotions anyone with borderline can end up in these really um, drama intense filled situation because there isn't a way to be able to, to know how to regulate our emotions and that anger so it just it just comes out there are some of us um, with borderline, it's an internal thing and it can become extremely passive. But, and then there are people like me, when I was angry, I would act out, you know? And um, because I spent the majority of my time alone anyway, I didn't really, if I was in a relationship, I'd only be in a relationship for like three months and I'd be done with it because I didn't really like how relationships made me feel. So I just decided to not be in relationships for the majority of the time. So I could just run around and do all of the, the the bullshit that I wanted to do in life, which didn't help me because it was extremely reckless. But intense, um, inappropriate anger, losing temper, being sarcastic, bitter, all of that is a symptom of borderline. Uh, next, we have uh, ongoing feelings of emptiness. So that's part of the depression that I was suffering. Well, it is the depression I was suffering from because I wasn't the kind of person that couldn't get out of bed. I wasn't the kind of person that um, couldn't do anything I was always doing stuff but I had this intense feeling of emptiness like always chasing the next thing always chasing the next meal the next experience the next thing to just keep me busy so I didn't have to sit with myself and I didn't have to feel the emptiness it's like this just void that just came over me it was horrible uh, that's another symptom of BPD another one we have is mood swings lasting from a few hours to a few days uh, which can include intense happiness, irritability, shame, or anxiety. So that's the mania that I talk about, the mania, and then you got the depression. So you, I used to get really, really high sometimes for days, sometimes for even weeks, and then I'd get depressed. And the depression wouldn't last that long because I always knew how to keep myself busy or start a new kind of reckless behavior to you know, distract myself from whatever situation that I was dealing with. Uh, up here obviously because most of it now I'm realizing is mental I was creating it all myself in my head yeah so mood swings um, we got suicidal threats or su suicidal behavior self injury often in response to fear of separation or rejection so um, I have taken part in that in the past um, not for a very long time it's been at least five years now I think around five years but that is how I ended up um, eventually getting diagnosed because of the attempts, uh, probably even before that, I'm still thinking we're like 2020 or 19. Um, so yeah, I dealt with a lot of that. Um, that's another uh, 
symptom of BPD. Next, we have impulsive and risky behavior such as gambling, reckless driving, unsafe sex, spending sprees, binge eating or drug abuse, sabotaging success by suddenly quitting a job or ending a positive relationship. Now, this was something for me, reckless behavior. I got so many good jobs and I just threw them down the toilet of making good money, I was actually, you know, whenever I did a job, I used to do it so well, but and then one day I'd wake up and I just, I couldn't deal with it and I'd just quit. And then I'd, re I'd regret it weeks later and I'd try to reapply and stuff, but by that point I've already seen that something's wrong with me because of, you know, uh, the way I used to deal with things. So I missed out on a lot of opportunities because of the reckless behavior of just quitting and, uh, unsafe sex, reckless behavior with strangers, with just doing whatever I could, um, again, to distract me from myself, to distract me from the emptiness that I felt. So that's another symptom of uh, BPD. We got periods of stress-related paranoia, loss of contact with reality, loss in a few minutes to a few hours. Now, I relate that to the disassociation that I used to experience. I used to get so into my emotions that I could do nothing else but dissociate from them. I And dissociation to me felt like, even though my body was here and I was, you know, a human being, I was like outside of it. So I was experiencing myself outside of my body whilst I was going through the motions and doing doing day to day work or whatever it whatever it was that I was doing. I would experience dissociation quite often, and I'd I'd noticed that it would happen when I would get overly emotionally overwhelmed. So dissociation is another. Um, hard BPD symptom to deal with. Then we have rapid changes in self-identity and self-image that include shifting goals and values and seeing yourself as bad or as if you don't exist at all. So the rapid change in, changes in self-identity constantly. I, I've cut my hair so many times and it's like every single time I feel like I'm going to get something from it and I don't. It's just another you know, trying to fill the void and not knowing who I am. So not being able to stick to anything and be consistent. I was always cutting my hair. And if I wasn't cutting my hair, I was dyeing my hair. And I know that sounds like a typical girlish thing, but I never did it just for the fun of it. I did it because I wanted to literally change who I was. And then realized by the time I did it, I still looked the same. I still kind of, you know, felt the same, but I was trying to blend into whatever reality that I was a part of at that point in time or whomever I was with at that point in time. So I've never been able to stick to one thing. I, you know, I, even though I do music, I, <clears throat> it's been increments where I do music and then I stop, I do it and then I stop. And that's the same with the ways that I used to make money with jobs. I used to do it and then I'd stop, do it and then I'd stop. And what, I'd go from one job to a totally different kind of job doing a totally different kind of thing. So I was never really able to say, okay, this is what suits me best and I'm gonna stick with it. I was always just back and forth with my identity and it's only now that I'm able to actually build an identity for myself because I am consistent now. Um, and I'm not wishy-washy or inconsistent uh, anymore. So that, the rapid change in, changes in self-identity. Um, next, we have a pattern of unstable, intense relationships, such as I idolizing someone mo one moment and then suddenly believing the person doesn't care enough or is cruel. So uh, with me, I, that's the splitting. Um, someone was either all good or all bad, either with me or against me. And there was no in between, there was no gray area. So, and usually this would reflect in my relationships and that's why my relationships didn't last that long. Um, and to be quite honest, the only reason I'm still married and the only reason that I'm still in a relationship uh, this whole time that I've been in Mexico for three years is because I've basically been stuck here because of certain issues with um, visa and, you know, my husband is American, my son is born in Mexico and I'm British. If not for that, keeping me here and forcing me to work on myself this whole time, almost going on three years now, I would have left. I definitely would have left, uh, especially if there was no baby involved, I would have gone. Because at that point when I was suffering from the borderline personality disorder, <clears throat> nothing else matters apart from protecting myself because this person is the enemy and they don't deserve to have me in their lives and they are the most horrible person, evil, everything, every kind of name under the sun. That was how I dealt with things by just running away. And for the first time in my life, I couldn't run away. I couldn't run away from this. It, running away for me would mean 
leaving my child and I'm not I wasn't willing to do that just leave my child with my husband and then just go because you know there is that emotional connection there and that is something that has helped me to find healing and to stop myself from making a reckless decision like that so the splitting was really intense but the way I used to deal with splitting and these intense relationships is by disappearing and I don't do that anymore because I have a stable mind and then um, the last one we have here is an intense fear of abandonment even going to extreme measures to avoid real or imagined separation or rejection and similar to what I said before I was the one that used to do the abandoning and I don't even feel like I'm scared of abandonment I I've got to a point I had got to a point in my life where I craved abandonment that makes sense. So I'd rather someone just leave me alone because I don't want to deal with the stress of them and I don't want to deal with them at all. I just want to be in my own little world and I want to be left alone. And I know that's a trauma response, um, but I'd rather people leave me alone than try to stick around and, you know, basically what it felt, it feels like being, being you know, suffocated when somebody is showing love to me and they're just being as good as they can to me and wanting to help me and stuff so the that the intense fear of abandonment is me um leaving instead of the other person leaving and whatever trauma is behind that you know that's what it is but yeah that is a borderline personality disorder in a nutshell that's what they you know base it on the internet and their medical book or whatever so that is what i used to deal with and <clears throat> since being on carnivore uh, it's my third month i think i'm going into my 13th or 14th week now i've honestly stopped counting now i know i said i stopped counting before but I've, I've really stopped counting now it's just a lifestyle now um so i've been on carnival for around 13 14 weeks and i started off with seven food groups um <clears throat> well no around 10 food groups to be honest but around the third day i i cut like two of two or three of them out so i started with cream i started with dairy so cream cheese um butter and then um, we had beef, pork, eggs, um, butter, ghee, beef, pork, eggs, butter, ghee, salt, what was the other thing? Beef, pork, fish and fish. So beef, pork, egg, fish, butter, ghee and salt. Um, and then I completely removed dairy, I completely removed butter. So I removed the cheese and the, uh, the milk in the first couple of days and the cream in the first couple of days. Um, cause I already knew it had a negative effect on me and it wasn't going to help me heal in the way that I needed to. So I really originally had those seven foods and then, um, around my 10th, no, sorry, my seventh to eighth week, I started beef, salt and water for a couple of weeks and then it catapulted me to the next level. And I was like, Oh my God, I can never go back. And I tried to reincorporate foods back in, uh, specifically bacon and eggs. And I was, I had a, a rough three days. So uh, since being on carnivore, all of those symptoms that I just mentioned, gone. I don't, I no longer have them. Uh, I used to have really bad anxiety. So I had really bad catastrophic thinking, always thinking the worst, always thinking about the worst case scenarios and what I'd have to do in those worst case scenarios and kind of come into terms with those worst case scenarios. So I wouldn't have to feel any feelings when they came around, like people dying or, you know, social services taking my kid away. Just so many things that I was afraid of, like physically afraid of happening. I'm, I don't fear them anymore because I see that they were unreasonable. I now am able to reason. I have reason. Um, so no catastrophic thinking, no anxiety. And with the anxiety, I used to black out. So I, I do music. So whenever I used to go to a show, before I go on stage, I would, there would, it, everything would just go black. And I, my heart, I could literally hear the, and I couldn't function. And I don't know how I ended up going on stage and, and, and performing a whole song, but by the time I'm done, I don't even remember any of it because the whole thing was done in anxiety. And I know people, you know, generally speakers and um, performance artists go through that, but the extent in which I went through it, it, did, it wasn't just in that moment. The moment I knew that I was going to be book, uh, booked, I was going to be doing a show, say it was three weeks earlier, my anxiety would have started from then and it would be really, really bad. And up until the day, I'm on the toilet all day. I can't eat anything. I've lost a bunch of weight because of it, all because the anxiety was so bad. And now if someone was to say, hey, Shade, you've been booked for the O2 Arena, I would be so excited. It's like my anxiety has changed into excitement. I no longer feel anxious. 
I feel excited. Every podcast I've had since being on Carnivore, I have felt excited for it. So like already my life has changed so much and I've only been on Carnivore for three months. I can only imagine what it's gonna do for me in a year, in two years. So the anxiety is gone, um, the depression is gone. I no longer feel empty. I have, I look, I look forward to things now. There is no void that I need to be filling every day, especially with food. I don't feel an emotion or I don't feel a negative emotion and feel the need to go and, you know, look in the kitchen for food or look in the fridge for some food. I'm actually, I'm so good. And it's not that I'm positive and joyful all the time. It's that I don't necessarily feel sad when I'm bored, when I was just supposed to feel bored, I would used to feel sad. Now when I'm bored, I'm like, okay, let me find something to do. Whereas before, when I was uh, bored, I used to get really sad and become really empty and overthink things and like, oh my God, my life has gone to shit. And then it would just spiral out of control. So yeah, not, I don't miss any of that. Um, and then on the upside we have, now I'm joyful. I look forward to things, the anxiety's gone. I'm very patient now. I didn't used to be patient at all. I used to be very irritable. So I never used to have the patience to wait for anything or the patience to stick to something long enough or be consistent with something for long enough. Um, I'm now consistent with things. Um, so just like with the patience and that the patience and the consistency, they go together. Cause now when I decide to do something, I know that I can do it all the way through without getting, you know, bored of it and just putting it down and saying yeah that's not me anymore part of the self the lack of identity thing it's like now I can pick something and stick to it because I know I picked it from a place of reason and not from a really um unstable mental place um <clears throat> my ability to think clearly and reason is you know it's like out of the blue I can now take something and not internalize it and create something that it's not I am literally just it is what it is if there is no problem, there is no problem, and I'm not gonna create a problem. It's like magic, what's happened to me, literally. Um, I'm able to create an identity now. Before I was so hooked on, you know, I'd watch a TV show, um, and I would basically feel like the person that I had been, that I had idolized on the TV show for so long. I just, I'd feel like them. And then when the show's finished, I get really sad, because it's like, okay, who am I gonna be now? Who am I gonna do my hair like now? Who am I gonna, you know, move and act like now in my day-to-day -day life. Weird, but that was just who I am. That's just, that was just the way I am. And now I feel like I have my own identity. I, I identify with the work that I do. I identify as a musician. I identify as a mother, as a wife. I identify as these things and I'm okay with it because that's who I am. And I don't have to be anybody else. I don't have to look like anybody else. I can look like me and I can be happy with me. I can never think about that before and I could I could read all the spiritual books in the world and I still wouldn't be thinking along those lines so that's a really really positive about being on carnivore and another thing that saved my life because now I have an identity I can live a meaningful life um next my skin has never looked better my just keep I feel 10 years younger now I mean a couple of weeks ago I felt seven years younger and now I feel like I'm 18 again which is amazing because I feel like I wasted so many years of my life doing crap and now I have like a decade a whole decade back I've got energy I feel light on my feet I you know my skin looks great I don't have really horrible bags under my eyes anymore it's amazing um, my body has never looked better so my I keep talking about my body composition and I'm not even weighing myself like that I'm just eating t till satiety and then stopping when I'm not hungry anymore. But I generally do finish my meals. I think I make just enough to not waste any and just enough just enough so I feel satiated. And I eat twice a day around noon and around 5 p.m. I tried the three, uh, three times a day thing, but it doesn't work for me. I prefer to fast and I, it's not even intentional. It's just when I wake up, I like to get things done. And by the time I'm finished getting things done, it's around about 12 or one. So yeah, my body's never looked better. I'm losing fat, I'm gaining muscle and it's consistent. I'm not yo-yoing, I'm not going up and down. I'm not binging. I used to binge a lot. I had a really bad disordered eating and I would just binge and then eat healthy, or binge fast and then eat healthy, binge fast and then eat healthy. Whereas now I just crave meat. And it's, um, it's, I've never craved just one thing in my life before. And now I just eat beef and salt, beef and salt and I drink water. 
And I never really drank sugary drinks before this, so it wasn't hard for me to just stick to water. I love water, it's the most amazing thing in the world. So um, yeah, my, my body has never looked better. My marriage is so much better. God, we get along so well now. And before we didn't get along at all. And right, bear in mind, we're both very stubborn people. So now I'm able to, to back down and say, okay, you know what, we can deal with this in another way we deal with things so much better now because I'm not on the defense. We're not both on the defense. And if he's on the defense, I can kind of uh, just, you know, extinguish the situation by being calm myself. So my marriage is so much better now. Um, I'm a better mother. I'm so much more patient with Gohan now. Like I don't get angry at him for little things. And I used to feel so bad. I used to, you know, overcompensate for the way that I would shout all the time and get frustrated because I knew there was no need for it. But in the moment I couldn't control myself. So I would, if he dropped water, I would literally have to go into the bathroom, put my head in a towel and scream because I was so angry the irritation anger but um i do my best not to do it in front of him i go into another room and i would just scream or if it was really bad i would scream in front of him because i would i just had enough whereas now i don't even do that i don't feel the need to scream i don't feel the need to shout he does something and i'm like well he's a kid i'm gonna go pick it up when i want when i go pick it up like there's, it's no big deal i'm a much better mother now because i have so much patience and uh the house is cleaner as well the house is always clean now and i understood before i used to just let the house get really bad and then just clean it all in one go when i had a manic phase or a manic few days whereas now i don't get manic anymore so i can't depend on manic days or manic hours to clean the house so what i do is i make sure i clean a room a day i clean a room a day now and uh, i pick up things as i go along which is a very logical thing to do that i never thought about doing before wash a dish every time a dish is in the sink you know simple things that make life so much easier another benefit and that's something else that's really saved my life because i hate cleaning when i was manic i used to love cleaning but i've realized this new thing about myself i really don't like cleaning i hate it with a passion no there's no form of cleaning that i enjoy at all um so yeah uh i'm a better mother i'm no longer addicted to food i don't binge i don't care for food anymore the only thing i crave is meat steak ribeye and picanha to be my three my top three ribeye picanha and corn, um, corn beef, ground beef. They are my three foods that I eat at the moment and that is it. I'm gonna reintroduce foods maybe in about a year or so. I don't know, how, however long, whenever my body asks me to introduce something, I will. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's mostly it. There are so many benefits, like my, my gums no longer bleed when I brush my teeth, they're no longer swollen. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm able to socialize now without feeling fear and being scared. I can meet new people now without a knot in my stomach and have this catastrophic thinking of, oh, are they gonna, not even are they gonna like me because I doesn't really care about myself too much to care of whether anyone else liked me, but, um, you know, just, am I gonna say the right thing? And am I, you know, I've always had to navigate social situations in a really strange way because I never knew how to socialize. I, you know, I have a lot of autistic traits and when I'm around other people, I, I, I've had to learn, I've had to watch, documentaries and shows and stuff to learn how to actually navigate myself around people and how to ask questions and how to speak properly and how to use body language because I, I just used to be you know straight face just talking and not really showing any emotion at all I had to learn all of this stuff and um, all of my siblings are autistic they are diagnosed autistic I'm the eldest of seven um and i wasn't you know basically the, the experimental child we are the the eldest so the, i say the eldest to experimental children and our parents don't really know at that point so um i was never diagnosed but i do have a lot of the traits repetitive behavior um uh, an aversion to intimacy and stuff like that but they have all dramatically improved on carnival so as you can see guys carnival has saved my entire life it's just made me a better person. And I know it's not a miracle for everyone, but it has been a miracle for me. But I also have to add that I didn't just go carnivore and that was it. I have spent the past decade on self-education, on learning, on, uh, on trying to help myself and my mind and being disciplined in different aspects of life to try and change the way that I was to, to be able to you know, master myself and bring myself into a certain alignment. And the moment that I was given the tool to do that, 
with the carnivore diet, it's like everything kind of clicked. It's like everything I ever learned just clicked one day, one day when I was sitting down. I think this was like the first week. Yeah, it was the first week in carnivore. And I'm like, oh, this is how I apply this lesson. And this is how I apply this piece of information. And it's just like my brain did this thing where it just kind of, and it fixed itself. So cool. So yeah, guys, carnivore, being on carnivore has saved my life. And I, if, if I could change anything, I would go back to the beginning of when I started and I would <clears throat> eliminate down to just beef and salt and water. I would do lion from the very beginning. But after the transition period, I wouldn't have just jumped straight into lion. But if I knew about lion uh, by the point I started carnivore, I would have done the, the, the basically the year transition that I did, the nine months of learning about it and then the three months of transitioning. Um, when I finally transitioned to strict carnivore, I would have done lion because then that would have eliminated everything out for me. And then I could have slowly, you know, by this month now, by month three, I could have started maybe introducing stuff back in. Um, so that's the only thing I would really change. But other than that, it saved me. It saved my life. It saved my family. It saved my mind. Um, I'm not body focused at all, but God, my body is just looking really amazing also. So that is it for today's video guys um i don't even know how long that was i have to I, I the only reason i haven't got a lot of content coming out right now is because i don't have a good phone i have a t-mobile rebel 4 and the quality is trash like the quality is ridiculous so i'm just waiting to get a new phone and i'm gonna have so much more content coming and hopefully be able to entertain you guys some more with my carnivore shenanigans. So yeah, I will be back with another video soon, guys. Thank you for, if you got to the end, thank you for listening. Um, take care. Bye-bye.